وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode in this series brought to you by Al Madrasa Al Umariya, and the topic is as it has been for the whole series, a detailed discussion on du'a and its etiquettes, based on the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal wa Qala Rabbukum Duuni Astajib Lakum, and your Lord said, "Call upon me, and I will answer you." Where we are up to right now is a very, very important topic, and it is the topic of Al Iqtida fi Du'a topic of going over boundaries, transgression in du'a. And I'm going to start by summarizing the concept of transgression in du'a and saying that transgression in du'a can fall, broadly speaking, very, in a very summarized sense, into three types of transgression. The first is transgression in relation to who you are making du'a to. Who you are making du'a to. The second is transgression in relation to what you are making du'a for. And the third is transgression in relation to how you are making du'a. Who you're making du'a to, what you're making du'a for, and how you are making du'a. All of these three categories have within them types of i'tida, of transgression. The greatest of which is making a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is transgression as it relates to who you are making dua to. Now in the general topic of transgression, generally speaking, the concept of uh, transgression, we start with an ayah in which Allah azza wa jal said, Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufyah innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen. Call upon your Lord in a state of submission, in a state of showing your need of him and in a state of fear. Innahu la yuhibbul mu'tadi. He does not love those who transgress. And this is the bit we need from the ayah. Innahu la yuhibbul mu'tadin. He doesn't love the people who transgress. This ayah, by the way, is in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah number 55. He does not love those who transgress, i.e. And, and, and the scholars of tafsir, among them are those who took the ayah to be general, all kinds of transgression, but it certainly has a specific kind of transgression, which is transgression in dua. That's what we want to talk about. Al-i'tida fi dua Transgressing as it relates to dua. Al-Rabi' rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in the meaning of the ayah, Iyaka an tas'ala rabbak amran qad nuhita anhu. He said, stay away from asking your Lord for something that you have been prohibited or something that is not right for you. And Ibn Juraid said in the meaning of the ayah, There is within dua transgression, kinds of transgression. Yukrahu. رفع الصوت والنداء والصياح بالدعاء ويؤمر بالتضرع والاستكانة. He said that within du'a there are types of transgression. It is hated for a person to raise their voice, to shout out and to scream in their du'a, and they are commanded to have تضرع, humility, displaying the need of Allah subhanahu wa taala, استكانة. They are, they've been commanded in, you know, the etiquettes we've talked about in du'a of humility and humbleness and, uh, and uh, a person to ask sincerely, a person to ask softly in a way that is appropriate in terms of the etiquettes of uh, du'a. And these are just some of, obviously, the examples of going beyond the bounds as it relates to du'a. And Imam Ahmed narrated in his Musnad, as did Abi Dawood narrate in his Sunan. And Ibn Majah and others, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mughaffal, 
رضي الله عنه أنه سمع ابنه that he heard his son يقول saying اللهم إني أسألك القصر الأبيض عن يمين الجنة إذا دخلتها Oh Allah I ask you for a white palace or for the white palace on the right of paradise when I enter it فقال أي بني he said my son سل الله الجنة وتعوذ به من النار he said oh my son ask Allah for Jannah and seek refuge from the fire فإني سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول سيكون في هذه الأمة قوم يعتدون في الطهور والدعاء I heard the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم say I heard the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say there will be in this umma a people who will go transgress in purification and in dua. What's the example of this transgression? We'll get into, into the details later, inshallah ta'ala, but just to give an understanding, the example of transgression here is unnecessary restrictions and details in your dua. Ask Allah for Jannah. Do you know that the best place in Jannah is the white palace on the right of Jannah? Is, do, you, do you know that's what's best? Do you know that that's the best thing? Or are you put in a restriction that you don't need? It's unnecessary. And you're asking Allah, ما لا ما, uh, You're asking Allah, ما لا ينبغي لك What's not befitting and it's not appropriate for you to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. So he warned his son. He said, ask Allah for Jannah. Allah will give you the best place in Jannah. Wherever it is, seek refuge from the fire. Because there will be a people who go overboard as it relates to uh, as it relates to dua. And we see this from people asking for things, very specific things. They don't know whether that specific thing is good for them. And there exists a general dua which would suffice them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give them what it is that they want, uh, they want from it. So this is something to bear in mind. We're going to come into it, inshallah ta'ala, in more, in more detail. So let's get into the examples of Al-i'tidafid du'a, transgressing as it relates to du'a. The greatest transgression is to ask other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Shirk is the greatest oppression. And the greatest transgression is to ask other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa anna al-masajid lillah fala tad'u ma'allahi ahada. The masajid, the, the mosques, the masajid, they belong to Allah. So don't make dua to anyone besides Allah. Notice the word ahada here. The way it's worded is in a general form, meaning no one. Don't ask anybody. Don't make dua to anyone except Allah. And the ayat prohibiting dua to other than Allah are so many that you can almost not count them. You can almost struggle. You will not be able to count the ayat that mention, that prohibit a person from making dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest dhulm and the greatest transgression is to direct your dua to other than Allah azza wa jal. From the examples of transgression is to ask Allah something which is not permissible. Something which is not permissible. Like asking Allah to facilitate something haram wal billah. We seek refuge with Allah from that. Asking Allah for something which is uh, haram uh, for example uh, you know like someone is let's say they are trying to get themselves into a haram relationship we seek Allah's refuge from that they're trying to get themselves into a haram relationship and they're making dua to Allah for this relationship to happen you know oh Allah please make her say yes subhanallah asking Allah for something which is haram this is i'tida it's transgression. From the examples of al-i'tida in dua, of transgression in dua, is to ask Allah something that we know that it is not from the wisdom of Allah to do it. In other words, Allah Azza wa Jal has told you that from His wisdom, He will not do this. And His wisdom dictates that He will not do this. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that from his wisdom is he will not allow someone to live on this earth without dying. You need to live eternally on this earth. In other words, to live forever. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his hikmah. We know that Iblis was allowed to live on this earth until the day of resurrection. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given any prophet, Allah azza wa jal has not given any person the ability to live on this earth eternally until the day of resurrection. So to ask Allah for something that he has specifically told us that he will not give from his wisdom, this is disrespectful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's disrespectful. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that he does not give his, uh, the unseen, knowledge of the unseen, in a general sense, except to the prophets and the messengers that he gives them what they need, but he doesn't give the, the knowledge of what is unseen with him. And a person asks uh, Allah Azza wa Jal for something that Allah has told you that he will not give you. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us that if it were not for the fact that you would not bury your dead, لَوْلَا أَنْ لَا تَدَافَنُوا If it were not for the fact that you would not bury your dead, that he would have asked Allah to show us the adab al-qabr, the punishment of the grave. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refrained from asking Allah that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a reason for it from the wisdom that was revealed to him by Allah is not to ask Allah to show the punishment of the grave. And then someone comes along and says, Oh Allah, show me the punishment of the grave. Asking Allah for something that Allah has told you or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told you that Allah will not do. And that is disrespectful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. From the examples of transgression as it relates to dua is asking for a position or a status that doesn't befit you. Like asking Allah to make you a prophet or asking Allah to make you an angel. That is not your status, that's not your position. Allah has not decreed that for you. And it's not befitting for you to ask Allah, it's not respectful for you to ask Allah after Allah has chosen for you the status that you have. Allah has chosen that you will not be a prophet. Allah has chosen that you will not be an angel. Allah chose that for you. When He created you, He chose for you the station that you have. He gave you flexibility within it to, to aim for the highest, the best you can be. But Allah did not make me or you prophets and messengers. So it's not right to ask Allah for something that He, out of His wisdom, has not given you a status or a station, like saying, Allah make me a prophet or Allah make me an angel. Likewise, to ask Allah without showing your need and like as if you don't care, as if you don't care, like you are mustaghni, like you don't need Allah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى As for the one who is stingy and sees themselves that they don't need Allah and disbelieves in paradise or disbelieves in the reward of Allah, this person, uh, we will make their life, and we will, we will make difficulties for them. So Allah Azza wa prohibited in many, many ayat of the Quran, al-istighna, that you see yourself to, that you, like you don't need Allah. So a person, for example, uh, raises up their hand and they behave like they don't care. They're like, oh Allah, you know, give it if you want, if you don't want, don't give it. And this is where the prohibition on saying inshallah comes from. Don't say, oh Allah, give it to me, inshallah. Because the, the implied meaning of inshallah is that you don't really care. Like, in shi'ta, what in shi'ta? If you wish you gave it, and if you don't want, well, it doesn't matter. That's what inshallah in this context, in this situation means. And it's the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes we see people generally from, the, from practicing Muslims making is saying inshallah in dua. May Allah make you knowledgeable inshallah. That's a very bad etiquette to have in dua. And it's an example of al-i'tida, example of transgression in dua. And it's an example of calling upon Allah without tadarru, without proper humility and, and need and showing yourself to be a, subjugated and desperate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. The word inshallah in this context, I know that's not what people mean, but that's what it means. It means, oh Allah, if you want and if you don't want, yeah, if you don't want, don't give it to me. If you want, give it to me. And if you don't want, then you don't have to give it to me. 
that's very disrespectful. It shows a lack of, you know, a lack of need, a lack of uh, desperation, a lack of being poor before Allah. It shows that, you know, like, well, you know, if you give it to me and if you don't, I'll just get it myself. It's that kind of feeling, that kind of mentality. It's very, very rude and it's transgression. So don't say, inshallah, when you're making dua for someone. Like, oh Allah, give it to me, inshallah. Or may Allah bless you, inshallah. It's very, it's prohibited and it's something which is a kind of transgression in dua. From the examples of transgression in dua is to worship Allah with what he did not, or to come near to Allah with what he did not allow you to do. So this inc includes the kinds of tawassul that are forbidden. We're going to come to tawassul, getting near to Allah in your dua uh, with something that is forbidden calling upon Allah with names that he has not given for himself and he has not given to his Prophet وسلم, like those people who call Allah who and they say who, 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 who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not call himself who or al who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not name himself this and the Prophet وسلم, did not name him this so this is transgression it's disrespectful to Allah to call upon him with a name that he didn't call himself with or the Prophet ﷺ didn't call him with. And this includes all the kinds of bid'ah in dua, any kind of bid'ah innovation that creeps into dua. This is from transgression in uh, dua. From the examples of transgression in dua that we see is dua cursing the believers or asking Allah to disgrace them uh, or to lower them. Uh, this is also an example from uh, the dua or, or some, of the, 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 some of the pious predecessors. They said in the ayah, إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Allah does not love the people who transgress. The people who transgress are those people يَدْعُونَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي مَا لَا يحب. They make dua against the Muslims in that which is not permissible. They say, Allahumma khsihim, O oh Allah, uh, disgrace them. Allahumma al-anhum, O oh Allah, curse them. And wallah, we still see this until today. We still, until today, see people making dua against entire countries, making dua against Muslims, making dua, like just blanket dua. Allahumma al-anhum, Allahumma khsihim, O oh Allah, curse them, O oh Allah, disgrace them. And often it's when people get emotional about something. They feel like the person let them down. They feel like the person didn't support them, maybe didn't give them charity or didn't stand with them in a, a matter, like a matter of uh, defending them or a matter of politics or something. And they become furious and they say, Allah anhum or Allah curse them, curse them. This is from transgression in a dua. From the transgression in dua, Wallahu al-musta'al. And we seek Allah's help for how common this is, is Raf al-sawt, raf an yukhillu bil adab, is raising your voice in a way that is disrespectful. And I include in this, uh, this kind of wailing that has become common among many of the imma in the masajid, the imams in the masajid. I'm not talking about natural crying that happens. The imams making dua in the witr in Ramadan, and he becomes overcome with emotion. He tries to keep it together, but his voice breaks. There is nothing wrong with that. But there are some people, subhanAllah, they are brought to wail in the masjid like the women were brought to wail over the dead in the time of Jahiliyyah. They bring the Imam not because of his qira'ah, not because of his knowledge, not because of his fiqh, but just because he knows how to scream and wail at the top of his voice. And subhanAllah, you sometimes would pray behind one of them, you don't even understand what they said. You can't even understand the dua. And it's not natural. It's a, it's a deliberate wailing that is exaggerated and screaming. SubhanAllah, I, I prayed behind one. They screamed so loud. SubhanAllah, I never stood in a, a prayer and had an intention to leave it except that prayer. That I stood in the prayer, wallah, I was... Mutaraddid, I was doubtful that I wanted to, to leave the salah because the imam was screaming at the top of his voice, screaming in a way that is, well, very strange. 
uh, wailing, screaming in a very exaggerated way. And when we asked the people coming out of the masjid, they were happy about it. They were, yeah, he's well known for this. You know, this is what he does. This is his speciality. Wallahu al-musta'an. This is min al-i'tida from an example of transgression into a, and it's not something which is uh, permissible. We heard the statement of uh, Ibn Juraid rahimullah ta'ala that from dua there is a kind of i'tida yukrahu raf'u sawt wa nida wa siyah bid dua It's disliked to raise your voice and to call out and scream when you're making when you're making dua this is something hated. Now compare this to the statement of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari that he said رَفَعَ النَّاسُ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ بِالدُّعَاءِ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أيها الناس أيها الناس إربعوا على أنفسكم فإنكم لا تدعون أصم ولا غائبا إن الذي تدعونه سميع قريب He said, O oh people, keep to yourselves. They were raising their voices in dua. There were people, they were, Abu, Abu Musa saw them raising their voices in dua. The Prophet وسلم, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to them, O oh people, keep yourselves to yourselves. For you're, calling, you're not calling upon someone who is deaf or absent. You're calling upon one who is all hearing and who is near. And Al-Hassan al-Basri, rahimullah ta'ala, he said, لَقَدْ أَدْرَكْنَا أَقْوَامًا مَا كَانَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنْ عَمَلْ يَقْدِرُونَ أَنْ يَعْمَلُوهُ فِي السِّرْ فَيَكُونُ عَلَى نِيَةً أَبَدًا he said, we, had, we met people. Remember, Hassan al-Basri is from the Kibar al-Tabi'een, the, the older Tabi'een from the Sahaba. We met people. There wasn't a deed on the face of this earth that they could do in secret that they ever did openly. The Muslims, they used to make hard, big efforts, strong efforts in dua and you couldn't hear any sound from them. إِنْ كَانَ إِلَّا هَمْسًا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ رَبِّهِمْ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It was just a whisper between them and their Lord Azza wa Jal. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَقُولُ أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيَةً Call upon your Lord in humility and khufya here we can take from it privately, quietly, quietly and privately. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ ذَكَرَ عَبْدًا صَالِحًا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ فِعْلَهُ Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned a righteous servant of his that he was pleased with the deeds that servant did. فَقَالَ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًّا Zakaria عليه السلام He called upon Allah as we told in Surah Maryam, ayah number three. He called upon his Lord نِدَاءً خَفِيًّا in a, with a hidden call you know, a private, he kept it to himself. He didn't raise out his voice. He didn't raise his voice. It was khafi. It was lowered. He lowered his voice and he called upon his Lord secretly and in private. Alayhi salatu wasalam. We're going to conclude with a quote of Mujalid ibn Mas'ud. Sulami radiallahu an. Annahu sami'a qawman ya'ujjuna fi du'aihim. Famasha ilayhim faqal, ayyuha al-qawm. لَقَدْ أَصَبْتُمْ فَضْلًا عَلَى مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلِكُمْ أَوْ لَقَدْ هَلَكْتُمْ فَجَعَلُوا يَتَسَلَّدُونَ رَجُلًا رَجُلًا حَتَّى تَرَقُوا بُقَعَتَهُمْ الَّتِي كَانُوا فِيهَا Mujalid bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه He heard a people who were raising their voices loudly in their dua. So he walked up to them. He said, oh people, Either you have gained a virtue that the people before you, meaning from the Sahaba, they didn't gain, or you have destroyed yourselves. So the people, they started to just walk away from this gathering of raising the voices in dua, man by man, person by person, until no one was left in that place. Look what he said. He said, look, I'm going to give you one of two choices. Either you're doing something, you've got a virtue the Sahaba didn't have, or either you're destroying yourself by doing dua in this way, which is one of the ways of innovation and of course one of the ways of al-i'tidafid dua, a way of going over the limits as it relates to dua. That's what Allah Jalla made easy to mention as it relates to the issue of al-i'tidafid dua, going overboard when it comes to dua. 
And in the next episode, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to begin to talk about tawassul, inshallah. Getting near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finding a means of nearness to Allah through additional actions that can bring your dua near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the permissible ways of doing that and the impermissible ways of doing that. And Allah is the general's best. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.